Good evening, everybody. This is Pastor Shannon. I wanted to thank you for coming to be with us tonight. Um, I wanted to ask you if you are joining with us tonight, if you would just put a, a comment there in the comment section. That'll let us know that you have joined in with us. I'm really excited about our opportunity to be together. Um, I've been preparing and praying because, you know, unlike in our, I guess, our regular life before all of this craziness happened, it seemed like about any subject matter would be a good uh, issue to talk about. But now I know that, you know, everything's changed so drastically. We want to be careful what we talk about. I want to make sure that everything that we talk about is valuable and helpful to you. Uh, so I'm hoping that uh, tonight's going to be a good time for that and hope you'll enjoy it. Um, I've entitled my uh, message tonight, Better Together. And I think you'll see as we go along uh, how the message is tied together with uh, this theme. And uh, I'm praying that, that your heart will just be opened up and comforted and that God will just use this time in a special way because I know if you're like me, we're getting a little bit crazy with our situation. Um, you know, we're getting a little bit uh, overwhelmed by being at home. So thank you. If you just now joined us, um, I'm looking forward to teaching tonight. The other day I was, um, I don't know how I fell onto it, probably through Facebook. I found a uh, message from Dr. Phil, the TV host, not to be confused with the many other Dr. Phil's that we have. Um, but Dr. Phil made a comment that I thought was real interesting. He said that there's a bigger pandemic awaiting us due to the fact that people are being affected by this isolation. Um, I got to see his show for a few minutes that he was filming from his home with his own camera to avoid harming others who you know normally would work for him in the production end of it he said that um he wanted to be able to help those who were suffering and his production company had warned him that they felt like it was dangerous you know for them to stay in business so uh he agreed and went on home with i guess about 300 people i believe he commented that there was about 300 people that were released from their duties and then he said he got to thinking about it and he realized that these were the most difficult times that we've seen and that he wanted to be a part of the resolution. So I really, um, you know, I thought that was super important. There's a lot of things going on right now. Um, there's a lot of issues that are mounting because of the frustrations in our economy. Specifically, there's a lot of people who have lost their jobs that are worrying. Um, I could understand how worry when you've got children who are wanting to be fed and you don't have the money to go buy what you need. Um, it's a natural concern. It's a natural worry that we're in. And then there's another group of people who are just home all day long. It's the first time for a lot of people that they've been home, you know, day after day. Uh, they're about to go crazy. They've got too much time on their hands. It's become very stressful for some people to be at home that long. And then there's another group of folks who are just afraid. They're, they're scared of getting the virus. Uh, it's real, and there's no shame in feeling the stress of a virus that could spread without you even knowing that you've been in the same room with somebody who might have the uh, virus who might be carrying the virus so there's nothing wrong with that we we have to accept reality that it's very dangerous especially for older people so um, you know we want to be aware of that so tonight we're offering a word to help you offset your in, your anxiety that's what i'm hoping i hope you'll be able to connect with us on facebook in the next few weeks we've got some good stuff coming up we've got teaching uh, preaching, um, you know, lots going on. And feel free, if you're joining with us, just to drop a line there in the comments page. Let us know that you're with us. I'll look forward to seeing you, at least in this format. Uh, let me go ahead and be the first one to say hi to you tonight. Um, 
I'm glad that you're surviving. We are supporting each other. Don't forget to call people and let them know that you're still alive. Um, I would suggest trying to call somebody every day. That would be very helpful. Just just keep a list and and call people and check on them, see how they're doing. Some people might just need some encouragement. Uh, there may be people out there that need help. If they are, you know, if you find those people, let us know. We want to be available. And I want to tell you something that I have discovered in this process. We are created to be together. I've, I've resolved to the fact that all of this time apart um, has clarified it for me. We are created to be together. We are people who need each other. A lot of us haven't seen other people in days. There's some people that, that have not been out. Um, I've not seen a lot of people myself, only the people that we're serving. Um, it's, it's rough for me because I love people. Uh, I love seeing everybody. I love to spend time with people. I've missed our uh, meetings together. Um, I've enjoyed our food when we get to eat together. And uh, it's tough. You know, it's been tough for me. And I know a lot of you are suffering in the same way. Being home too much is very difficult. So I'm glad you're here with us. We're, there's a sense that we're together. I see your comments coming in, and uh, I'm excited to see you here with us tonight. And I want to encourage you. We are better together. And uh, togetherness is a way for us to share our love for each other. We are stronger when we're together. Uh, the Bible says in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, in verse 12, it says, And though a man might prevail against one who is alone, two will withstand him. And a, cord, a threefold cord is not quickly broken. I love that phrase. A threefold cord is not easily broken. Uh, we're, we're standing together as a threefold cord where we're family together, we're helping each other. You know, crisis usually has a way of bonding us together. Throughout time, catastrophic events caused everybody to pull together. This event has done something different. It's caused us to separate. This may be one of the first times in, in our history, uh, in our lifetime, that a catastrophic event has actually caused us to separate instead of being together. We had to separate in order to keep the virus from spreading. So we were doing what we needed to do to prevent the deadly disease from, from attacking uh, in all directions. But it's not been fun for me. Uh, I'm so eager to see people that I actually take my time shopping at Home Depot even when I don't need something. I'll tell you how bad it's gotten for me. Now I'm even taking those, uh, those pesky calls from telemarketers. And <laughs> that's how, that's how bad it's gotten. I'm, I'm talking to telemarketers now. So, um, you know, truthfully, we are forever changed by this event, by this time in our history, we're, we're changed and we have no idea of what it's going to look like in the future. We don't know when this is all over what it's going to be. Um, you know, we don't know. It's still to be seen what will happen to our culture uh, when this is all over. So tonight I want to share with you um, from a text out of the book of Luke. Uh, if you want to get your Bible turned to uh, chapter 18, we're going to look at um, some some of the text there in Luke chapter 18. And we're going to be talking about interruptions tonight. Um, I don't know if you all have thought about it. Uh, let me explain to you a little bit about interruptions. We've got a plan and God's got a plan. So, you know, we've got to look at our own situation, each one of us, and try to decide which plan are we going to go with. You know, are we going to be... Uh, taking our plan? Or are we going to be, um, are we going to go with the Lord's plan? So when you find out that your plan is subject to change, you'll, you'll enjoy the interruptions that God brings into our life. 
you may be looking at your own agenda as a primary uh, plan for the day, but what we need to do is we need to look at our plan as a secondary plan, and we let the Lord's plan become the primary agenda for the day. We are his to do with as he pleases. So remember, we are submitted to the plans of God. We are his uh, to accomplish his task. We're not, we're not trying to accomplish our own will. We're, we're surrendered to do the will of God. So we keep our eyes open to the opportunities that the Lord may send to us. So how do you know? I know some of you may have the question, how do you know which opportunities are from the Lord? Well, we have to stay attentive with our eyes. We have to stay attentive with our ears. And then also we need to be spiritually attentive. So I encourage you tonight, let's look at the text and try to find from Luke's uh, writing, from his testimony, um, what we can do to know the will of God, to find it. And uh, we'll start in Luke 18. It, you know, I know a lot of you would expect a message, but considering this is the Holy Week, um, you know, Holy Week messages are pretty different. Easter messages are pretty different. But I want to look at, at uh, a little bit of that um, in Luke chapter 18. Um, we can see in verse 31, beginning in thir verse 31, he says, And taking the twelve, he said to them, See, we are going up to Jerusalem, and everything that is written about the Son of Man by the prophets will be accomplished. For he will be delivered over to the Gentiles, and he will be mocked and shamefully treated and spit upon. And after flogging him, they will kill him. And on the third day, he will rise. But they understood none of these things. This saying was hidden from them, and they did not grasp what was said. You know, still today, I think most people will not grasp, um, you know, what the reality is of this week. This was the third time in the text um, where Jesus was foretelling of his own death. This was the third time that he had told his disciples what was going to happen. And still they didn't understand it. Uh, you know, still today people don't understand it, that Jesus came to die for our sins, that he paid the price so that we can receive the free gift of salvation. People still don't understand it. Well, let's look, continue to look in our text. In verse 35, I'm reading from uh, the New King James Version. In verse 35, it says, Then it happened, as he was coming near Jericho, that a certain blind man sat by the road begging. And hearing a multitude passing by, he asked what it meant. So they told him that Jesus of Nazareth was passing by. And he cried out, saying, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Then those who went before warned him that he should be quiet. But he cried out all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. So Jesus stood still and commanded him to be brought to him. And when he had come near, he asked him, saying, What do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, that I may receive my sight. Then Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has made you well. And immediately he received his sight, and he followed him, glorifying God. And all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Well, I love verse 35. It says, then it happened. It happened. Life happened. Tragedy happens. Good things happen. A good friend of mine called me today. He said he was almost in tears. He had just left the doctor, um, him and his fiance had just left the doctor. Um, they are expecting their first child. And he said he was just about in tears because the doctor told him, said everything looks good and the baby's going to come a little bit early. The baby's real healthy. And in about two weeks, he's going to be, uh, you know, the father of this, of this little baby into the world. So he's on top of the world right now. And I can, I can tell you, I remember that feeling. I, I remember how great it was when our kids were born. 
But then life happens. Um, COVID-19 happens. Good and bad things happen. So what do we do? Well, we have to respond to whatever happens. I've been praying today that I could respond to the opportunity tonight to um, share with you all a word from the Lord that would really make a difference. And I want to encourage you that we can endure through whatever happens if we will be strong together. We need each other. Uh, we are stronger together than we are separate. So let me ask you this. How full is your schedule? Uh, is it booked up so tightly that when life happens, when things happen, you have to keep on moving? Are you open to God pushing a schedule change into your routine? Are you willing to make an adjustment to your day in order uh, that you might help others that, you know, when others are in need that, you know, God could use you to help others. Um, I hope you're not so busy that you won't allow anything to slip into your agenda. That's my prayer for you. The Lord Jesus certainly had a demanding agenda. He had a great deal of responsibility. God sent him to earth to gain salvation for all and to launch what we now know as the church. He and the disciples were very busy. Um, he had what we believe, you know, what we believe three years to accomplish his ministry here on earth. And that they, they were very busy. The disciples were not just sitting around twiddling their thumbs. They were very busy doing the work of the Lord. Uh, somehow Jesus value system and priorities, uh, allowed for what we might call interruptions. People barged into his presence. Even when, the, even when the disciples tried to stop them, people barged in uh, to the presence of Jesus. One, you know, one of my absolute favorite times was when the little children had been brought to Jesus. If you've got your Bible open, you can see back in verse 15 through verses 17 of chapter 18, you see the story there. It says, then they also brought infants to him, that he might touch them. But when the disciples saw it, they rebuked them. But Jesus called them to him and said, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them, for of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. You know, that blesses my heart. Every time I see that, that interruption where Jesus was doing, you know, those things that uh, we read about, a lot of amazing miracles happen, and people wanted their children to be blessed. And uh, they brought them, brought them to Jesus, and he, he wanted to bless them. He loved those children, and he loves us. You know, that's one thing we can take assurance in is that the Lord, he loves us. You know, he loves us so much that he's willing for us to be on his agenda. So, you know, don't be afraid to go to him. On another occasion, there's a man who was referred to as a blind beggar, who was uh, probably what we would say a very little earthly value according to the world standard. You know, our, our world today still does not value people with disabilities. And, um, uh, you know, it saddens my heart. The Lord loves us all. We all have value. Every person has value before God. And uh, I hope that we will all value all people. But this man, who was probably not much value to the society in which he lived, was sitting at the right place at the right time. He was sitting by the roadside near Jericho. That reminds me of a story from several years ago when I was in Kenya, there was a rather large baboon sitting near the edge of the road when we were traveling from Nairobi to the western part of the country on these very rough back roads. They had not developed any uh, interstate highway at that time to get from one side of the country to another. And these roads were just rough. And uh, we came to this part where there was a baboon sitting there like his hands 
were just propped up. Uh, it looked like he was just waiting for something. And I asked the driver of the van, I said, what is that baboon doing? And he said that baboon, that baboon comes every day and sits by the edge of the road waiting for people to feed him. And then when he gets satisfied, he goes back into the bush uh, after he gets what he wants. You know, he comes out there and people will throw him food, maybe throw him a banana or other vegetables. And uh, that baboon has developed a habit of sitting by the edge of the road every day. And sometimes poor people in our culture are forced to do the same thing. You may be around uh, certain parts of town when you'll find people who are standing by the edge of the road. You know, they're standing at, at traffic lights. They're waiting with, a, with their hand out or with a sign asking for help because they have to beg in order to make a living. Um, I'm just wondering about your situation. Have you ever had to to beg for anything? Um, I can tell you for myself that I am a professional beggar. Uh, I don't stand at the traffic light. I don't stand um, by the side of the road with a sign. But I, I have spent my adult career begging uh, for help. I've begged for those who, you know, don't have what they need. I've begged for the help that we need for children. I've begged for food for hungry people. Even right now, uh, today, I've been getting messages the last several days. But even today, I've been getting messages from people that know that I'm doing the Lord's work uh, from Kenya telling me that there are people there who are starving because they've lost their jobs and they don't have money to buy food. Everyone is on lockdown. It's almost the same as it is here in the States. They're locked down. They were sent back home. They were told to leave their jobs, leave the city, go back into the country where their families live. And the government has really cracked down on this situation there. And a lot of the people had to go back home, but they don't have any income. And the government doesn't have any support for their people in Kenya. There's no unemployment checks. There's no, there's no government support in poor countries. And I've been sending money to help the need there for hunger in Kenya. I knew the need was going to come because the locust had already done a great deal of damage in that part of the world. But now with this um, COVID-19, a lot of people are home. They've been home for weeks and they don't have a job and they're just praying that God will deliver them. There was a guy sent me a prayer today. His name's Helm. And uh, I've spent quite a bit of time with him when I was there several years ago. We prayed a lot together. And this was what he said. I asked him if he was doing okay. And he said, I'm okay but we are deeper into prayers asking the almighty God to wipe away this coronavirus and free us from its calamities and from destruction worldwide. You know, I just thought that was an awesome prayer. A lot of people are praying. A lot of people are suffering. You know, there's a lot of people in need. Um, even in my own situation, you know, I've, you know, I've learned so much in this last year about life. Um, some of it has been, you know, been hard learning. I'm not going to lie to you. It's been, it's been a surprise. And, uh, you know, I've had to become more dependent on other people. Um, these last couple of years, I've learned a lot about dependency. I've learned that sometimes you just need help. And, uh, you know, I thank God for friends and for family. Most of you who are on here, you know me, you, you know, you know what I've been through. You know how, how God can provide help, how God can provide comfort. He'll send a person to you right when you need it. You might get a phone call. You might get a visit. You might get an invitation uh, to go eat. You might get, um, you know, you might get a chance to see somebody that you love and care about. That would be a blessing. But see, we, we're reading a story here about a blind man who called out to Jesus 
as he was walking with his disciples and probably some other leaders, they were on their way to Jerusalem to some very important happenings there, some very important meetings were going to be going on. And Jesus was on his way. And just like in our current day, if you were on a well-traveled road, you would see the roads cluttered with a lot of hurting people and hungry people. It's like that anywhere you go. If you go into any any city, any big city where there's a, a highly traveled road, you will see people there on the side of the road begging and some of them just waiting for somebody who shows compassion. Um, you know, last night I was, um, I had to go by the bank uh, after I picked up my, my takeout dinner, you know. Um, I had to go by the bank and uh, there was a man that was so desperate that he came up to me at the ATM machine at the bank. And I warned him, I, I warned him how dangerous it was to walk up to somebody at an ATM machine. I've never had that happen before, but I don't think he even realized, you know, he was just so desperate. And I, I warned him about it that, you know, somebody, uh, somebody might hurt him, you know, if he, if you run up on somebody in an ATM machine, that's serious. But, you know, life is filled with a lot of inconveniences. Many people, uh, they tried to avoid the beggar. They wanted to keep him away from Jesus. But in amazement, Jesus stopped to meet that man's needs. In the next chapter, we see that uh, we see there there was a, a known crook, a tax collector, who had a bad reputation for overcharging people. He encounters Jesus. You all remember the story. Um, he was a distraction. But what did Jesus do? He responded to the man right where he was. Jesus set aside time for this man in need. He interrupted his travel plans to bring salvation to a person. He went to the home of Zacchaeus to talk with him. That was a new important part of the day. Just like in our own life, there'll be times when interruptions will come. And Jesus was ready for a change in those plans. He was ready for the disbursement of blessings. That's what I like to refer to it, is a disbursement of blessings. God will let us be a part of that blessing to other people if we will take the time and be willing to be used by God. I'm telling you this little secret. I don't know if any of you have discover this. I know some of you have, but if you will allow the Lord to use you for his agenda, you will be the one chosen to help others in whatever their need might be. The Lord is looking for those who are willing to be used. If you want to be used to get a blessing to share with others, then that's what the Lord will do for you. He will let you be a part of his work. That's what the Lord wants to do. He wants to use us to be a part of his work. And I want to ask you all a hard question tonight. Um, it's a question that really should make you take a hard look at yourself. I want to ask you this question. Do you have room for others in your life? Do you have room for those who are lost? Do you have room for poor people who are starving? Hunger is real. It's real here in Knoxville, and it's real all over the world. You know, we have an opportunity to help others. We have children all over the world, even here in Tennessee, that don't have enough to eat. They're hungry. Their homes are empty. They don't have food. You know, I, I look into my cupboards, and I look into the refrigerator. Sometimes I have to move something out of the refrigerator to put something in. That's how much food that we've got. That's, you know, we're blessed to have that much food. But there are people who don't have anything in their refrigerator. I want to ask you, do you have room for the blind beggar? Do you have room for the person who is suffering? Do you have room for that person who is living on the very edge of existence with a low paying job and maybe they're raising their children on their own? We've got a lot of single parents out here, a lot of a lot of single moms raising their kids, you know, and they're feeling overwhelmed with the expense of taking care of their children, of paying their rent, of paying for the electricity, of buying things that children need. I mean, there's so many things, clothing and other items that they need. 
Let me ask you, do you have room for the person who's been forgotten? Sick people often get forgotten. They can't come see you. They can't come to church. And they often feel ashamed for even asking for help. But they appreciate everything. They just, every gift, you know, every blessing, anything that comes their way, they're so thankful. And uh, I just pray that you've got room for them. Friends, the Lord does not want us to be so busy that there's no room for those that he wants to minister to. You know, God's wanting to use us to minister to people. Right now is a good time for us to be ministering to people. And I want to ask you to pray and think about what God might be wanting to do with your life. And I'm going to show you why. Look again at verse 43 of our text tonight. After the man was healed, verse 43 shows us this. He says, and immediately he received his sight and he followed him. So first of all, we see the impact. When somebody gets a blessing, I know a lot of us are, you know, we've been callous. We've become callous that, you know, through the years. And we think that when you help somebody that it, that it don't really help them. But according to what we read in this text, in this story, he says the man received his sight and he immediately followed him. And he gave glory to God. Folks, it's powerful what can happen when you get a blessing. You know, I want to pray for you that you'll get the blessing. I'm praying that I'll get the blessing. And when we get that blessing from God, we're going to give glory to God. We're going to praise the Lord. That's what's going to happen. And the text says this. He says, and all the people, when they saw it, gave praise to God. Folks, this is much more than what we realize. This is something here that's happening that can bless the Lord. This can bring glory to God if we make a way, if we open our eyes to those around us, if we if we open our hearts, if we'll open our minds, if we'll spend time searching and looking for what the Lord might be wanting to do, when all the people see it, they will give praise to God. They will give glory to God. That's what our lives are for, that we can give glory to God. You know, open up your heart. Make room for those who need us. Be on watch during these important days for God moments. I call them God moments. They may look like an interruption, but they might just be something the Lord has put into your path as an interruption that opens the door for somebody to be blessed. Somebody might come to know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Somebody might climb out of hopelessness because they see your love and concern. I pray that the Lord will use us in a mighty way and that he will open doors for us to minister to people. Folks, we are blessed. We are the church. We are blessed people. God has been so good to us. You know, we have so much. We've got We've got a lot to be thankful for. I know some are suffering harder than others, but we have still so much to be thankful for. And I just want to pray that you will keep your eyes open, that God will, will use us, that we can encourage each other because we are stronger together. We need each other. Folks, I want to ask you, keep praying for me. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally past uh, my my time of suffering. Um, I appreciate the prayers. A lot of people have been praying. I love spending time at the church. I've enjoyed my time at the church and I just thank God for what's happened there. We just, we've been so overwhelmed with so many good opportunities and I'm thankful for my work at the center, getting to help people here in the city and uh, just blessed. I feel blessed and I thank God for you. I know a lot of you are, uh, joining in with me to help other people, to pray for people, talk to other people. Uh, very likely, the next time you see me, I'm going to have braided hair. I'm going to have to braid it. I can't find anybody to cut my hair. Um, I started trying to cut it myself, but it didn't go so well. So thank goodness I stopped. Um, 
but please pray for my hair. <laughs> pray. Just keep praying. We've got a lot of opportunities. Um, I know some of you are wanting to be a part of the things that God's doing. We encourage you to uh, to be watching. Um, our pastor search committee has uh, invited uh, a, a really super neat guy, Brother Mark Martin, to be a part of our church and uh, be watching him, you know, pray. I'm not telling you what to think. I'm telling you to pray. Ask ask the Lord. You know, we, we want to get this right. So ask the Lord what his will is. Uh, listen to him on Sundays and pray. Don't go by don't go by what you hear. Go by what the Lord says. Don't go by what a person says. Don't take our word for it. Pray and ask the Lord to show you what his will is. And then also I want to encourage you, continue to support the work of the Lord. Um, a lot of our churches are going to go through financial suffering. Uh, this is not the time to, to bail out on financial su financial support of the church or the ministry. Um, you know, don't 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 bail out now because we've got more opportunity now than we've ever had. So, you know, give as you can to support the work. We need your help. Um, and then keep praying. Just keep praying and check on people. Uh, pray for the church. Um, you know, continue to pray for me. I appreciate you. I love you. I thank God for the privilege that I've had to to be a part of your life. And I just look forward to us being able to get together again and enjoy some sweet fellowship and maybe some of the good food that we've enjoyed in the past. And, you know, we'll gather around the table again one day, hopefully in the next few weeks, and this will all be over. And and we'll just remember how much we love each other, how much we value our time together, okay? Let's pray. Father, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for this family that will gather around a computer screen or maybe a phone, a smartphone. They're, they're gathered around a message tonight, Lord, that uh, I think is very important, that we're stronger together. We're better together. We, we can do more. We can help each other. Lord, we can, we can care for those in need. Um, we can be your church, Lord. We can be available. And I pray, Lord, that you will just help us. Bless us, Lord. We want to be your people. We want to be the church. We are the church, Lord. We're not, we're not talking about a building. We're not talking about meetings. We're talking about your people, your servants, Lord, your followers. We want to bring glory to your name, Lord. That's my prayer, Father, that we would be instruments of your glory as we uh, show others how to live for you, as we serve others, as we, as we minister, as we teach, as we preach, as we pray, Lord, as we help others, that you'll be glorified. Father, thank you for loving us and being patient with us. And Lord, just continue to guide us through this very trying time. Uh, I know you're with us. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, folks, thanks for being with us tonight. Uh, again, I just encourage you, um, you know, feel free to put your comments in the comment section. We always enjoy looking at those and, you know, feel free to throw some shout outs to somebody that you love. I see a few people on here that, that uh, I don't get to see all the time and I'm just happy that you're here with us tonight and just praying for God to continue to guide us and help us. All right. Have a good night. And uh, if you need us, let us know. Okay. We'll be there for you. Bye-bye.